crash and burn. Hey everyone, so tonight I want to discuss um, Gus Van Zandt's Paranoid Park. And quickly, this story is about a skateboarder named Alex who learns to sort of ride the rails. He learns how to ride trains from, oh Christ, what the hell was his name? Oh, the guy's name was Scratch. He meets him at Paranoid Park, which is a skate park in the movie. And Scratch teaches him how to like ride trains. And while they're out there one night, what happens is they alert one of the nearby like transit cops, one of the security guards that work there. And he's trying to chase them down off the train. And Alex's skateboard, I wouldn't classify Alex as being guilty of anything here. I mean, criminal mischief at best. He certainly didn't murder the guy, but his skateboard hits him, kind of. I would argue more that the security guard just lost his footing and fell, and he falls back on another track just as a train's coming, and it slices him in half, and that is the plot of the movie. Now, there are a number of smaller subplots, mainly Alex and his girlfriend. His girlfriend is pushing to have sex with him, and he doesn't want to because he knows from that point forward everything's going to change, and he just doesn't want anything to get that serious. And he ends up sort of having sex. He ends up having sex with her at a party, but it's sort of like impersonal and very passive, and he just sort of gets through it, and she's completely unimpressed. He breaks up with her after that. And all the while, he's sort of dealing with the guilt of this security guard being killed. And he's trying to find a way to sort of work his way through the problem. And that's kind of the whole movie. This movie is more atmosphere and feeling over traditional storytelling or a narrative-driven storytelling. This movie is more about, you just kind of see Alex and you can kind of see the worry and the concern on his face and how he's so young. And we've all been there. Like I haven't, I haven't been responsible for killing anybody, but I can think of a number of things that really worried me that I was involved in back in high school and I lost sleep over, you know? And that sense of dread and that sense of like claustrophobic panic that overtakes high school kids when they get involved in shit that's above their pay grade. So I can completely relate to him in that fashion or in that sense. But at the same time, like I said originally, he didn't really do anything wrong. I mean, the criminal mischief causing death thing, yeah, he's probably going to be on the hook for something along the lines of that. But he was just fucking around. The security guard got a little overzealous, in my opinion. He attempted to do his job a little too well, and he paid the ultimate price for it. I mean, if I'm some fucking transit cop, I'm not going to put my life on the line because some kids are fucking around on a train. The worst thing that's going to happen is the kids are going to die, and the, the, the railway is going to be sued. And there's a really good chance that, that wouldn't affect my employment because... Nobody wants to be a late night transit cop in the first place. So there's always that. So I would, I would argue that Alex really didn't do anything wrong yet again. But I think my favorite thing about this movie is just how dreamlike it is and how it just kind of feels like Alex is sort of sleepwalking through the rest of the movie as the result of his actions. And now he's, he's trying to bob and weave his way through you know, like I said, the guilt and the unknowing and like, oh my God, what if somebody saw me? What if somebody didn't see me? The thoughts that would be just firing through a person's head at this point would be absolutely catastrophic. Inevitably, one of his friends says he should just write it down. Maybe it'll get rid of whatever it is that's bothering him. And so he does, and then he destroys it and the movie ends. So it's Gus Van Zandt. If, if you know Gus Van Zandt's work, you know what you're getting yourself into. It's atmosphere over dialogue. It's attitude over narrative-driven storytelling. It's more of a feeling. It's more of like, uh, there's, a, there's always a, a sense of loss in so many of his movies. There's always like so many broken characters throughout so many of Gus Van Zandt's films. I mean, I'm talking everything from Elephant all the way back to Drugstore Cowboy. Gus Van Zandt is sort of a master storyteller um, by way of keeping things quiet and sort of letting you as the audience figure out the character's motivations and the story even a lot of the time on your own because it's almost like a lot of the times in his movie his characters just sort of wander aimlessly from A to B to C to D and you're, uh, you as the audience are left to sort of pick up the pieces and that's exactly how I felt about Paranoid Park. It's a great movie. I love how dreamy and atmospheric it is and I love how solid the attitude is and I love how the mood is very... Um, gray. 
So I think I'll leave it there. So thank you so much for hanging out with me for almost, oh, actually technically a little over five minutes while I discuss Gus Van Zandt's uh, Paranoid Park. If you like this review or discussion or whatever, don't forget to do something nice for somebody. Don't forget, you guys kick ass. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good night. I just wanted to say thank you for making it through the entire video. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to remind everyone one more time, even though I've probably already done this in the video that you just watched, to please click the like button as well as the subscribe button because it helps this channel grow. And thank you for hitting like and subscribe. And we will see you guys really soon.